there are a number of things that uh, strike me as totally wrong with the idea that you can't have morals without a God, because I think that to a large degree, your morals can be tested um, in moments of immediacy or emergency, where you don't really have time to contemplate. And Absolutely. I have, on occasions, found myself without thought. Um, rushing to the aid of someone that is mm -hmm. being beaten up by mm -hmm. a number of people in the street or someone that's collapsed and needs medical aid. At no point is there any conscious decision about this. It, it's, it's, in, it, it's instinctive in me. Um, hardwired, if you like. Right, and, that's the case. Yeah, and what I, what I find extraordinary is the people that say, let, let's stick with Christians for the time being. Um, and they say, oh, well, I get my morality from the Bible. I have to say that I don't believe these people have ever read, read, read the Bible. And if they have, um, or even if they haven't, you would say, well, what, what are the fundamental moral values you take from it? And inevitably, they're going to end up saying the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. When you ask them what those Ten Commandments are, it's more than likely that they won't be able to name more than five of them. <laughs> and, I know. and these are the same people that will say that there is an objective moral standard um, from God. Mm -hmm. my, my retort to that, and I know it's something that you're familiar with because you've used this example in your lectures to good effect, I, I pose the trolley problem to them. Mm -hmm. And I say, there's a problem there is your Bible. What is the answer? Now, for, the, for those that may not know the trolley problem, would you just like to explain that before I take it to this next uh, slide? Sure. Uh, it's, a, it, it's a great problem that uh, some philosophers, I think, originally designed. And it, it goes like this. You're uh, walking down a road, and you buy a trolley track, and you see a runaway trolley and you look and the conductor of the trolley is slumped over the wheel is something happened to him and the trolley is hurtling down the track and there are five workmen on the track and they're going to get run over by the trolley and you notice that there's a switch that will maybe divert the trolley and it'll divert it over to a, a, a side uh, track, uh, but there's another workman on that track who, who, if you divert it, is also going to get uh, hit by the trolley. And so, uh, is it permissible? Is it permissible to to run over and to hit that switch and and divert the track, divert the trolley onto the other track? And most people. Uh, say automatically, yes, absolutely. Then there's a second trolley problem, which is you're out for a walk and you're walking over a bridge and you notice that a, a trolley is hurtling down and you look and the conductor is slumped over and you look behind you and it, the, the trolley is going to go under the bridge you're on and there are five workmen that are working on the track and they're going to get hit. And uh, what do you do? And there's a big man standing next to you looking at the runaway trolley to a big fellow. And, and you realize that if you take this guy and push him off the bridge and, and he'll go down on the track and he will, uh, the, the trolley will hit him and uh, stop the the runaway trolley. Is it permissible to push that guy off the bridge? And, and, and people say, uh, no, no. People, people uh, just say, no, you can't, can't do that. Almost everybody. Um, and if you step back and look at it, it's exactly the same problem. You kill one person to save five. It's the exact same moral dilemma. But in the first, people um, say, you know, absolutely, it's permissible to, to hit the switch. In the second problem, people say, 
No. A few people, after a long pause, will um, say, well, okay. And what this shows is that we have this instinctive uh, 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 response not to harm. We, can, we, can't, we can't push that guy. Um, we can push a switch uh, where we're not directly harming, um, but we can't do direct harm. And we have this instinctive mechanism. And what's even more exciting, to me at least, is that we've, we've mapped it out with these neuroimaging studies. And the people in the first trolley problem, what lights up is a piece of cortex that is does calculations. Uh, uh, kill one, save five, okay, move the switch. In the second problem, we have the cortex light up, but we also have an emotional part of our brain in, in, the, in the medial front part of our brain that lights up and it creates a conflict. And that's the emotional instinctive part that's going, don't, don't push, don't hurt. And, and there's another part of the brain that mediates it, this uh, anterior cingulate cortex. And so you can see both parts of the brain light up and you can see it sort of mediated and, and a few people you know, will say, well, it's okay to push the guy off the bridge. But what you see is that instinctive automatic uh, response that we have that we, we can't tell you, 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 you know, if, if I ask you later why you did it, people will come up with rationalizations and explanations, but they're really secondary because you really didn't know. You just had this instinctive response. No, I can't hurt the guy. And so you, 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 you really see it in the, in the flesh, so to speak. And then they do all sorts of other interesting trolley problems where the person on the track where you would divert the train is your mother. Um, or somebody in your family. Um, it, it's fascinating research. And if, if morality comes from God, why did he make psychopaths? Because the psychopaths have no problem. The psychopaths throw the switch in the first experiment, and in the second experiment where you push the guy off the bridge, psychopaths, no problem. They push him off the bridge. No big deal. And the psychopaths, that medial part, the emotional part, that instinctive part, doesn't light up. Um, you know, it's just strictly calculation. Yep, push them off the bridge. Um, and so you you see, I think, all sorts of interesting things that, you know, if you can fit God into that picture, more power to you, because I, I think science shows it in, in much more accurate and complex richness. Well, I, I've uh, had this conversation with a number of people, and one of the variations I put on it when they I, I said to them, look, uh, here's a Bible, here's a, tro tro a trolley problem. Um, if you get your morality from the Bible, tell me the answer. And the answer to the first one, you know, oh, that's easy, of course, I save, uh, save the fine. Um, and the variation I threw at him was, well, what, sorry, I saved the five, yeah. What if, what if the five were convicted murderers and pedophiles? And he paused Ooh, for a moment and good. said, well, that makes it more difficult. And I was like, well, of course it does, but there's your Bible. Yeah. Um, you where say objective morality comes from your God. Um, where is it? I, I, I just find it absolutely fascinating. And the other thing about the trolley problem is that this is universal. Um, yes. This experiment has been done in yes. many different countries, has it not? Right. With, the, with the cultural variation of the equivalent of a trolley. And, and, and the I results really like are? The same. I mean, they're, they're, they're mm -hmm. universal. Um, and, and so again, I think it, what it shows is that it taps into innate human nature. Now, I think that's a brilliant idea to say, okay, I, I've not heard that one about, okay, the five people on the track that would be killed are all convicted murderers or pedophiles. And um, another variation that occurs to me would be, you know, the five guys on the track are convicted murderers and pedophiles and the person on the diverted track, the one person who would be killed is uh, your, your mother, or, you know, and somebody who you or, know well. Or an alternative is the person that you're going to throw off the bridge is a convicted murderer and pedophile. Yeah, I mean, the I think the variations are, are, mm. are 
uh, fascinating. And what they tap into are these innate moral instincts, which you know, then, then create, can create conflict. Again, going back to morality from the Bible um, and what has unfortunately been described by our Prime Minister in the last few weeks as the virtue of Christian values, what, this is slightly off topic, but what Christian or moral values do you actually see the Bible advancing? You know, I, I, I don't. Um, I, I see it as cherry-picked. I think um, people pick out the ones that they think are actually congruent with their intuitive moral systems. And, and I think it illustrates the problem because they'll, they'll pick out the ones that are automatic, intuitive, emotional for them, but they don't have a rational explanation. So they'll, they'll latch on to the rational explanation, say, provided in whatever they cherry-picked out of the Bible. Um, and then, of course, they ignore the ones about you know, stoning adulterers. Or well, the problem I think they have um, is that however wonderful their arguments are uh, in that the Old Testament laws no longer apply because Jesus fulfilled the sacrificial covenant and therefore only the you know various bits of the Old Testament apply and so the one I think they're absolutely bang to rights on is the issue of slavery. I don't see how they get around that because Jesus never spoke against slavery. It's mentioned in the New Testament um, several times um, and on all of those occasions it's never mentioned um, as if you know, it's a bad thing and it shouldn't happen. Um, and yet this is something that I don't believe any theist now would seriously try and advance as being a morally acceptable thing to do. Um, so I'm not bothered about the stoning to death, but the slavery issue is one I can't see that they will get around, they can get around. But that... No, and I, I think... Sorry, do people, go on. People, people are interested in the topic. I think the best, one of the best discussions of this is in Sam Harris's little book, Letter to a Christian Nation. I, mean, it, you know, I think he, he really takes that issue of slavery and, and uses it um, beautifully. 